Aloha. If we haven't met before, my name is Spaceman Steve, and today I'll be talking about the Star of Bethlehem. Well, it's December, and that means that I've been getting a ton of questions about whether or not the Star of Bethlehem can be explained by modern astronomy. If you're not familiar, the Star of Bethlehem is a celestial object described in the Bible as part of the Christmas story. It was a star-like object that apparently rose and directed traveling astrologers from Persia to the location of Jesus shortly after his birth. People have argued about this star for centuries, and if you take a look at the literature, there are many, and I mean many modern-day scientists who have tried to explain this phenomenon in a heavenly host of different ways. So let's take a look at the story in the Bible and see what we can find out about this curious object. In fact, the details are a bit scant. According to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, Magi, which is a term that was used for religious astrologers from Persia, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked King Herod, where is the one who has been born king of the Jewish people? They were talking about Jesus. We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. King Herod then tells the Magi that the child would be born in Bethlehem, according to an ancient prophecy. After the Magi had heard King Herod, they went on their way and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. And that's it! That's all the information we got! Apparently, these astrologers in Persia saw a star rise and they associated it with a king. So they traveled to Jerusalem to speak to King Herod and ask about this other king. And King Herod sent them down to Bethlehem. There, they saw the star rise and it stopped overhead of them at the location of Jesus. So what was the star of Bethlehem? Well, let's take a look at some of the possibilities. First, note that the magi that are referred to in the story are also commonly called wise men or kings but they weren't kings. That actually refers to another ancient prophecy, but we won't get into that. The term magi probably refers to the Persian priestly caste of Zoroastrianism. As part of their religion, these priests, or wise men, would study the stars, and they gained an international reputation for being really good at astrology, which back in their day was highly regarded as a science. Now, contrary to what you might think, even 2,000 years ago, these priests had a really good understanding of the night sky and how it changed over time. Fun fact, their religious practices and use of astrology led to the term magi and its derivatives to be associated with the occult, and it's where we get the English word magic. So scientists were the original magicians. So if we take the words of the Gospel of Matthew literally, they saw a star rise and then stop overhead at a specific location. And this doesn't sound like how things in the sky work. Stars and planets and the sun and the moon all rise in the east and set in the west throughout the course of the day or night. There are no stars that begin to rise and then simply stop in the sky somewhere. But keep in mind that the languages that the Gospel writer was using at that time were Aramaic and Hebrew and possibly even Latin, and the book was being written down in Greek. Plus, the Magi came from the East with their own language and own culture and own description of the sky, which would have passed through the community. So we have to take the word star with a little grain of salt. So let's take a look at two key things that we know about the Star of Bethlehem. One, it was visible from Persia and Bethlehem right around the time of Jesus' birth. And two, it rose in some sense both before and after the Magi talked with King Herod. This actually narrows down our possibilities quite a bit. Scholars mostly agree that the time frame of Jesus' birth is between 6 and 4 BCE. So was there anyone else in the world who recorded sighting strange phenomena in the sky at this time? Well, there's a couple of prime candidates, comets and supernovae, so we can start with those. Well, Halley's Comet was visible in 12 BCE, but that's far too early. But another object, possibly a comet, 
was recorded by Chinese and Korean astronomers back in 5 BC, and that's bang on. This object was observed over 70 days, giving enough time for the Magi to travel. Now, comets, like stars, will rise in the east and set in the west, but over the course of time, they will also appear to move with respect to those background stars. In fact, some ancient writers actually described comets as hanging over certain cities, just as the Magi described the star standing over the place where Jesus was. So hey, that seems pretty good. But the problem is, in ancient times, comets were seen as really bad omens. The word disaster actually comes from dis, which means ill or bad, and aster, like astro, for star. It means an ill-fated star. Something is coming that should be avoided. But here we have this group of magi who are running towards this bad omen, wanting to worship the king that it represents. So something just does not fit here. So how about a supernova? This is when a massive star comes to the end of its life in a resounding explosion that lights up the sky for weeks or months. Several supernovae have been seen with the unaided eye throughout history, and they can be absolutely spectacular or very faint, depending on how close the star is to the Earth when it died. And the likely date of a supernova that went off was February 23rd, 4 BC. It was seen in China, Korea, and the region of Bethlehem. This object is now known as the Hulse-Taylor Pulsar. But the supernova would have rose in the east and set in the west, and it would have no special significance over Bethlehem specifically. So again, something just doesn't seem to fit here. Okay, like I said before, there are many, many more hypotheses and possible explanations, but the one that fascinates me the most is a series of planetary conjunctions that took place in 3 to 2 BCE. A planetary conjunction is when two planets appear to get very close together in the sky as seen from the Earth. Of course, these planets are still at massive distances from each other in space, they just appear to be close from our perspective. If you are watching this in 2020, then we are about to witness Jupiter and Saturn go through a planetary conjunction of their own. From our vantage point here on the Earth, these planets will come within one-tenth of a degree of one another. So if you hold out your forefinger at arm's length and look at the width, the planets will come within one-tenth of that width. This will cause the brightness of Saturn and Jupiter to combine in a spectacular show that hasn't been seen in 800 years. Curiously enough, this happens on December 21st, 2020, the winter solstice. Okay, so taken literally, the biblical account speaks of the star rising twice, once before the Magi go talk to King Herod, and once after they talk to King Herod. Now, on August 12th of 3 BCE, Jupiter and Venus came within one-tenth of a degree of one another. Ten months later, Venus and Jupiter got together for an even more spectacular encore. On June 17th, 2 BCE, they came even three times closer than they did before. To the vast majority of people with average eyesight, the two planets would have appeared to coalesce into a single point of light brighter than Venus or Jupiter. It would have been spectacular to witness. So was the first Jupiter-Venus conjunction what led the Magi to go to King Herod? And then after they were directed to Bethlehem, when they arrived in the city, the second conjunction happened, and they interpreted that as confirmation that they were in the right place. This is all speculation, of course, and there are massive problems. For instance, the Jupiter-Venus conjunction would have occurred in the western skies, not directly overhead in Bethlehem, but that could be a result of the language. Also, the travel time from Persia to Jerusalem and then to Bethlehem should not have taken anywhere near 10 months. But like I say, the biblical account is pretty scant in details, so who knows what the Magi were doing. The biggest problem is that scholars agree that King Herod died in 4 BCE, and the Jupiter-Venus conjunctions both took place after that. So, since the Gospel of Matthew specifically mentions King Herod, there's obviously an issue with the timeline. 
I'll also quickly mention that there's an alternative explanation of a series of Jupiter and Saturn conjunctions in the year 7 BCE when King Herod was still alive. But the planets did not actually get extremely close, and there's been an almanac that was discovered in Babylon that mentions the event, but doesn't take much special interest in it at all. Okay, so there's one last possibility. It was a miracle. And in the spirit of the nativity story of Christmas, by faith, we can believe or not believe that some heavenly sign appeared in the sky to astrologers from Persia, and this took them to King Herod and ultimately to Bethlehem. Scientific papers are going to continue to be published on the subject, but we simply may never fully know the answer. And isn't that what faith is all about? If you celebrate it, have a Merry Christmas. But regardless, I hope that your season is full of love, laughter, and light. Thank you so much for your support, and until next time, I'm Spaceman Steve. <laughs>